Neo, here he is joining us live. Hello. Hello. hello, hello, hello. Great can to I, have you in Australia. Can I just start this by saying we were just talking off air and Neo said, oh, yeah, I used to have what you have in your chin, Mikey, a chin stud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he's a, another cool dude because well, only cool people have these. Well, no. Well, well see, I had mine in, in high school <laughs> yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm now 35. So so you took yours out? Yeah. It's yeah. Right. Well, now, okay. I don't want to take age, mine though. out. Everyone gives me crap about it and says well, take it out. I don't want to take well, it out. Well, you know what? Every, to each his own. If you if you like it, then you keep it. And on. I do, but I want to know one because this labret, uh, they call it a labret yeah. piercing, right? Mm-hmm. So I've taken it out before, and like bits of saliva and crap were coming out of it. <laughs> That's Have you, so disgusting. Did it close up for you? Mine is actually still open, which is weird. I mean, it's not open to where anything could come through it. Yeah. Which is actually a little weird for yours. If it's that open, geez. <laughs> yeah, it's but, that wide open. But no, the, the hole itself, it, it never really fully closes all the way up. Well, I like that Neo had one. It makes you cooler than what I thought you were. I already thought you were amazing. That works. But you I'll see, if you have a Labret but he knew extra the right, cool he, points. He knew the right age to take it out. He's though. 35. I'm not 35. He said he had so it in high age. school. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Don't worry about it. Got years left with it. Also, a little secret about Mikey, Neo. Mm. Is, is this that, just pick on Mikey with Neo Day? Well, it's, uh, that was an accident. I didn't know that he had a chin stud when yeah. he was in high school but Mikey's breakup song mm-hmm. is actually a song that you sang really what do you mean my breakup song it was the once, least. it was it was once when I'd had a breakup I just I, think we should get down to the nitty gritty like what about the song helped you relate to your breakup well I mean it, it's I suppose Neo could tell us more about the song that he wrote, but it's the the things you go through when you think the about the things them. that you remember about that person. Yeah, and you know what? When yeah. you break up with someone, if you want to be serious, Emma, I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> you think about all the good things guys do anyway, not mm-hmm. the bad things, right? And the list is about that. You're talking about yeah. all these good things. Yeah, well, and in actual fact, you should write a bad breakup list. happened. Like if yeah. she broke up with you, yep. you tend to think about the good stuff. If you broke up with her, you can only remember only the bad remember stuff. the bad stuff. I was going to yeah. say for girls, it's the opposite. We only focus on the negative so that we can move on. Yeah. It's not like, oh my God, he was such a great lover. Well, oh, although, so I reckon Neo's got a point. If you've been broken up with, like, you didn't want it. Right. You didn't want to break up. So, so all you're you reminiscing. Can think about is the good stuff. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. did you write that about a breakup? I did. Yeah. I did actually. So yeah. obviously, she broke up with you and you were yeah. thinking of all the good stuff. <laughs> been to that, I've been in that place more times than I care to talk about right now. Yeah. <laughs> move on, move on. <laughs> Are, are there songs <laughs> no, that you dislike kidding. that you've written um, that you now like don't want to hear anymore? Like I don't want to hear my first show. You know what no. I mean? Like, it's pretty oh, shit. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Um, you know what? That's that's kind of the case with all of my music. Like I I can't just sit back and listen to it and just enjoy it for what it is. I'm all, I'm constantly critiquing it, especially the older stuff. Like oh, if I would have like so I sick. If your first big that. one, yeah, yeah. Like I always listen to that song and think of you know different ad libs and runs and, and harmonies I could have did and all of that. Yeah, your I own just, voice critic. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Which is funny about this album. Like, this is actually the first album that I can Non-fiction, it's called, by the way, everyone. Yeah, Yeah. my new one. I can actually listen to it and just enjoy it for what it is. And I think it has a lot to do with the way that the songs came to be. You know, a lot of the songs on this album are based on stories given to me by my fans. So it kind of... I kind of take myself out of it a little bit and, and think about it like I'm, I'm so it's I'm not as, about somebody else. It's not about your inner turmoil. It's not, about other not people. every song. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. It's other people's problems. So I can, you know. Yeah, you enjoy it that it's way. Easy yeah. to enjoy other people's issues. There you go. You've written songs for huge artists like Rihanna and mm-hmm. Beyonce. Have you ever written a song and given it away and gone, oh shit, I should have kept that for myself? I never have. I genuinely never So you never give them have. all the crap ones? <laughs> all the ones you don't want? <laughs> No, I, you know, I've always felt like if I if I gave a song to somebody, especially if the song went on to like become a hit, mm. then that's pretty much who that song was supposed to go to. Yeah, you know? okay. I feel like there's no such thing as a coincidence or an accident. Or do anything do like you that. know when you like? Are they like we want you to write for Beyonce, or is it you just write songs and they shop them around to who it fits to? Both. It, it happens both ways sometimes. You know, I've, I've gotten calls from Beyonce's people like, "Hey, the project is about to start." You know, submit whatever you like, and then I'll I'll be in the studio and just do something and go. This would sound really good on this person. Hey, you, yeah. what, what what is the biggest song you've written for someone else that we'd know of? Um, I th- I think the Beyonce record is the biggest thus far. Okay, yeah, like the ir- irreplaceable. irreplaceable. Yeah. And you wouldn't let someone write your music, would you? Mm, I mean, I, I've co-written with people before. Me yeah. and Sia actually co-wrote uh, "Let Me Love You." Okay, yeah, right, Sia. Yeah, yeah cause she was a songwriter before. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. she did her own thing as well. Now we need to talk about this. I don't even know how to say a name, Emma. You've been talking Juliana about Juliana Rance. Okay, have a listen to the comments. She's talking about Zendaya. Compared to me, overwhelms her. Like, I feel like she she smells like patchouli oil. <laughs> <laughs> or weed. Yeah, maybe. 
Now, the reason we ask you, Neo, is because you've mm. actually been on the Fashion Police show before and you sat mm. on the panel and you've critiqued and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you think that um, the comments were racist or were they taken out of context? I feel like anybody that takes anything seriously that's said on that show needs to lighten up. <laughs> okay. oh, no, it's the not whole a show, show is, yeah. is a joke. They yeah. joke about everybody through the entire show. I mean, come on. Kathy Griffiths is the host. Like, you can't you can't take it serious. Yeah. And it's not hard it to do, right? You're just sitting there just... You, you just got to say stuff about what people are wearing. So, it, like, you could you could make a mistake by saying yeah, that. Yeah, right? you could easily make a mistake. But, but again, it's it's meant to be funny. You yeah. know, so for people to take it so serious, it's like, why would you take that one comment and decide to suddenly turn this into CNN? Like, no, it's a joke. The whole show's a joke. There you go. Get over it, Zendaya, from Come Neo's on. mouth. <laughs> hey, on, hang man. around. More with Neo coming up. We're going to delve into his private life mm-hmm. a little more. Uh-oh. Yep. Hang around. Neo. <laughs> more with him next. Well, Neo's joining us live in the studio after we got evacuated. Hello, nice. Neo. the nice. hell was that, that was, all about? I'm no longer a fire virgin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, though. Like, Mike Didn't and I have worked much here. As they say. We've worked here for years, and we've never, never been, been evacuated out. out of the building once. Okay, I have a confession to make. Was uh, it you, Neo? What were no, you doing? No, it was not me. No, it was not me. What's the confession? No, oh, nothing. I was just saying. <laughs> wasn't me. Okay, there was a post on your Instagram that said she likes a gentleman who knows when not to be gentle. Mm-hmm. Mikey thinks that nice guys always come last. Would you agree or disagree with that? See, Neo's a nice guy, but he's cheeky. I can, I can see, I can see. He no, would know how to get the girls. He's a cheeky you have guy. To have very small horns holding up your halo. That's oh, what isn't that brilliant? Yeah, that's what it is. That might mm-hmm. be my problem. No. It's just bloody huge horns hanging over there. There's yeah. no halo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, there's a rumor that you were married because you and your girlfriend Crystal were spotted with matching left ring finger tattoos. Can we have a look at your left ring? Right. Mm-hmm. So, can you confirm or deny that you are now I a married man? I am not man? married, ladies and gentlemen. So, what's I'm the deal with what's the deal with a tattoo, which we've seen? It's a promise. It's a <gasps> promise. Is this it's like a promise. a promise ring, but like a promise tat? Something like that. Yeah. It's not one of these like promise rings that like Miley Cyrus used to do, not to sleep with people and stuff. No, that's like a virginity, yeah, no, 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 like purity no, no, we're, ring. We're definitely having sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for that. Do you know what? My uh, very first boyfriend gave mm. me a promise ring as How'd a Christmas go? present. Didn't work out. What'd you mm. do to him again? No, I'm engaged to someone else. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's not not so setting a good example for... It's really No, not. I didn't get a tattoo, though. I, I'm sure that if you get a tattoo, that means it's real and it's yeah, going to happen. No, that is yeah. definitely real. Pretty damn permanent. Definitely and did real. you just find it was easier to get a tattoo than actually propose? Um, mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Yeah, we're, we're happy right now. There's no there's no set date or anything like that. We're just... We're in a happy place. And we that's decided good. to make the promise, so the promise has been made. When it does happen... You guys will be the first to know. Yeah, he'll, he'll dial through to the edge. Absolutely. Won't call his mum or anything. He just calls us nope, straight away. Nope, yeah, you first. Engagement <laughs> selfie on Instagram. Um, you you're go. a huge celebrity now, but it wasn't always like that. And in, not at all. In um, the song Time of Our Lives with People, you talk mm-hmm. about like not being able to pay rent and like buying things that you can't afford. Mm-hmm. What was something that you could tell us about in your life before Neo was this Neo? Um, well... The funny thing is, is that in that I'm, you know, somewhat financially stable now, like people feel like I always was. Like I never, I never had to struggle. Like I lived in a van for six months. Wow. Really? That must have when smelled. When I first moved to LA, it was me <laughs> and literally four of the guys. We were a singing group. Yeah. We, we moved from, from Las Vegas. I graduated high school in Las Vegas, moved to LA. Uh, we, our idea was we were going to go to the Capitol Records building. It's like one of the most. Yeah. N- yeah. Another building. Yeah. yeah. Park our van in front of the building, stand on front of the van, stand on top of the van, and sing until the president of Capitol Records came out and just gave us a record. Deal. And how did that yeah. go? I didn't. <laughs> no. We knew the security guards on a first name basis. They would come out every day and go, "All right, good job, guys. Move Get on. out of here." You know. What <laughs> so, what would you say to anyone listening right now who wants to be a star, who wants to be a singer? Um, how did you get there then? What, what What's your best advice? Well, the one thing I always tell people is, is that talent definitely counts for something. It absolutely does. It does. But yeah. it's not the only thing. No. Mm-hmm. Persistence, you know, hard work. Yeah, you, have to be, you have to be prepared to work and work harder than the people around you. Because mind you, there's billions of people that want to get into the business. It's so true. And not everybody's going to get No, most people have it. people that can sing, so you've got the little bit of talent there. Mm-hmm. And then on top of it is the hard work, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You have to have some sort of work ethic. You have to have... A, it's a state of mind that you have to have. You have yeah. to go, you know what? I'll sleep later. 
Yeah. Sleep sleep comes when I'm rich. I, I sleep <laughs> on a bit of money, but right, <laughs> right now, I got to get it. I got to get it going. I love that. That's great advice. And is it true that you hated the uh, sound of your own voice when you started? Well, I didn't yeah. believe this when I read it. I you got a great voice. I hated my voice when I first... Well, see, my mom... I, for, first and foremost, my, mom, my mom's my hero. Yeah. Always has been. So she used to listen to, like, you know, the OJs and the Temptations and, like, these really thick... Oh, oh, oh. Like really like masculine heavy. guys. Yeah, like these really heavy voices. And mm. I didn't have that as a kid. I had like a really high, nasally, tingy voice. And right. I hated it because I didn't sound like what my mom would listen to. So that's when she introduced me to Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. from there, you know, hi, my name is Neo. <laughs> <laughs> the album is nonfiction. Yes. It is out now. Right uh, Neo, now. thanks so much for coming in. Sorry that we kicked you out halfway during yeah, the interview. Thank you for okay. putting up with I the fire emergency. The, I didn't mean to set the building on fire. Oh, he's so to, hot. That's what happened. To take a quick talk and uh, <laughs> I dropped it. Sorry, guys. Neo, thanks so much. <laughs> All uh, love. 12 to 9 right now. The Edge.